It's really tempting to look at something like this and think to yourself, my God, that's horrible. For whatever reason, we're conditioned to look for this arch through the back or a flat back. So when we see the opposite like this, with this rounded back and this hunchback, it's kind of cringeworthy, right? So this video is the first form critique that we're going to take a look at and break down in full today. It comes from Michael Walsh, who is a member over at Gambaru Method. And if you want to submit your own lifting videos for critique, I'll leave a link in the description box down below. You don't need to be a member of Gambaru to submit your videos for these critique sessions. But of course, I would love it if you did get a membership. You wouldn't just be supporting me and this channel, you'd be getting access to a complete training, nutrition, and coaching experience. There's a no-obligation free trial available too for you to try it all out and check out all the programs, workouts, and resources within the app. So go check that out. All right, so back to this video. Uh, let's have, take a look through it and go through a few more videos as well. So Michael checked in with me and he sent this video over and he said, do you have any tips to improve my posture? I'm aware that my shoulders are not retracted. This was 180 kilograms and would you simply advise lowering the weight? So let's go through this again and just have a look through it in slow motion and go through frame by frame here, and have a look at what's really going on. So first of all, is this lack of retraction or bringing the shoulder blades back together, is that really a big issue for deadlifting? No. When we're looking at deadlifting, retraction or pulling the shoulder blades back is actually a cue that I advise against doing. Reason being, when you're in this bent position here and you're trying to lift the bar off the ground, your goal is to have that barbell traveling the least amount of distance possible because that will allow you to lift the heaviest weight possible when we're looking at deadlifting here to train the posterior chain. Now, of course, there are different variations to this. You could be doing things like a deficit deadlift or a snatch grip deadlift, which changes things altogether. But when we're looking at trying to get the strongest possible, lift the most weight possible, you want to be positioning your body in a way where you're able to create stability and strength through the entire upper body and the lower body. But you don't want to be rowing your deadlift. Your arms should be positioned just like hooks to latch onto the bar. And then you want to think about elongating as much as you can, or if, if anything, protracting and reaching your arms forwards ever so slightly, but it's a bit more of a degree here for, for Michael, to put you into a better leverage position to be able to lift that weight. Common mistake I see a lot of people doing in this, um, in this bottom position is they'll sit up really, really nicely, and then they'll start to pull back and almost shrug the weight up and try to squeeze their shuttle blades together. It, Seems like it might be a good cue because we think of like really good posture when, when we do that. But in actual fact, doing that makes it a lot, lot more difficult for you to, uh, a lot harder for you to lift the weight. It makes the whole lift a lot more difficult. So I think the position of what Mike was doing here is completely fine. When you look at this little hitch here, okay, when we go from like that, he's kind of, kind of, kind of trying to shrug and hitch the bar up. I would not be advising that. Um, so you could potentially make the case of saying, look, go a little bit lighter. But as you can see here, this is something that's close to a maximum, is pushing his limits. You're going to see some form breakdowns, some technique breakdowns. And a little hitch like that to get the weight moving is completely acceptable. I wouldn't be training for that long term. I try to try to iron that out. Um, but it's fine. Okay, so when we're looking at a deadlift, what I'm really looking for here is the bar path and how is that bar traveling relative to your shoulder blades. So as you can see down here in the start of the lift, I'm gonna come back to this hip position actually, but if we look at just say this rep here, it's got this big hump, whoops. Okay, right here, pause. He's got this big hump to his back, like it's, it's a question mark position with his uh, upper spine. Look at where that bar is relative to his shoulder blades or his armpits up around this position right here. It's perfectly aligned. 
which is the most mechanically efficient position to be putting your body into when you're lifting that weight. You want that bar resting over your midfoot, which is what's happening there as well, and then you want your body positioned in a way where your armpits, shoulder blades are vertically stacked over that bar. That's really good. If we look at his lower back position here as well, he's not completely hunched over. His lower back is staying in quite a static fixed position. And when he goes through the actual repetitions, you'll see his lower back doesn't round further. It doesn't extend further up until the, um, the very end, maybe, I think. Uh, yeah, you see a, a tiny little bit, like look at his lower back there. You see like a little bit of extra compression and extension there um, at the top there and he doesn't have this exact same lower back positioning in the, in the bottom of the deadlift. It's a little bit um, flatter, I guess, but that's really not pro problematic. There's going to be a small degree of spinal motion occurring as you deadlift or as you squat or as you do any lift. You can't avoid it. You shouldn't try to avoid it. It's something that I made a lot of mistakes on. A lot of people have sort of come full circle on over the years is realizing that um, a perfectly straight extended spine is unrealistic for many people. And if anything, that is actually quite mechanically inefficient. Allowing a degree of rounding, especially in the case here where we see Mike was rounded out, actually allows him to go into a more mechanically efficient position. It helps him lift the weight much, much better and with, uh, with more force, which is really useful for his entire body. Now, I know people are going to watch this and freak out saying, oh my God, this is dangerous advice. He's going to snap his back. He's going to blow his disc out of his spine. But the reality is, his body is not fragile. No human body is completely fragile like that. Your body can withstand these kinds of forces as long as your recovery is in point, your training is in point, your nutrition, your sleep, all that kind of stuff, and you're not doing anything stupid in the gym with your training. Um, it's completely fine to be showing this as long as it's within your structural, anatomical abilities. So for Michael here, because of the size of his rib cage, because of the shape of his rib cage, because of the shape of his whole body, this is a very mechanically efficient and strong position to be in that allows him to load up his muscles effectively, both his back muscles through his upper back, his lower back, and into his glutes and hamstrings and legs. He's getting a lot out of this. So I think that's really important to note there, is first of all, rounding itself isn't bad, but it actually could be a useful thing for some people. As long as the bar path itself is staying in a good position and his body position relative to the bar is in a good position as well. That's what I really care about. Um, I think we've really got to get away. We've really got to get away from looking for ideal postures. I think that's one thing that this whole fitness industry has create a lot of issues around over the last few decades is we strive to see this perfectly straight back, broad shoulders, proud chest, erect spine when we're moving around, but this is just not a realistic display of the uniqueness of human structures and every single other person's body. Um, and when we start to, I guess, cringe or get frightened by stuff like this, when there really isn't any any more danger being placed upon his body than my body doing a straighter back deadlift, then I think it creates a lot more barriers to training. It creates a lot more resistance and a lot of fear for people, thinking, like, oh my God, my back doesn't look like Eugene's, it's not perfectly straight and arched up, I'm going to snap everything and burst into flames. And it's just not the case. Your body can withstand a lot and it will change and it will develop and it will grow and build more muscle mass and resilience over time if you're allowed to expose it to that, as long as the training is appropriate. So again, this technique for Michael is great. I wish we could see a um, comparison for him where if he tried to retract his shoulder blades even more and really poke his chest forwards and arch his back a lot, because what I think would happen with Michael is as he tries to do that, he'll start to lose the positioning of that bar relative to his shoulders and shoulder blades. His knees will probably travel forwards more. His bum will drop down. And I mean, you can even kind of see it in this first rep here. Okay, like look at his back position there. His back, his back and body position there relative to this rep. I wish I could screenshot this. Maybe I'll, in post-production, I'll edit a couple of screenshots here that I'll go over the screen so you can see the difference in his body position. But what I see here in this first rep, before he even lifts the weight off the ground, his back's a little bit straighter. But 
what's the issue? His hips are a little bit lower. His knees are a bit far forwards. The, his body position is slightly off from his ideal start point. And then what do you see happening when he starts to lift the weight up? Bang. Weight hasn't moved at all, but what's he done? That's where the weight starts moving. He's lifted his ass up. His butt's raised up. His body's shifted forward. So now that bar is placed vertically over his shoulder blades. Or shoulder blades are vertically over the, the bar. And that's a much, much better position for him to be in leverage-wise, which his body wants to default to. So he's trying to correct himself here when he doesn't really need correction. And his brain, his nervous system is much smarter, so it recorrects him and puts him into the most mechanically efficient position for him to then start pew, lifting that weight up. So long-term, maybe if he worked on maybe some mobility somewhere, maybe if he had, I don't know, differences through his upper back, maybe through him strengthening, it might change, but it probably won't because by the looks of this, a lot of it is pure structure. Like, look at this position here. His shoulders are in a really nice neutral-ish position. They're not really rounded forward. His chest is poking out. He's in, you know, relatively good posture for him, for his structure. It's, it's great. So, We've got to learn how to identify this and say, for you, this is fine. For other people, like for me personally, it actually wouldn't be a good idea for me to try to get into that rounded position, but everybody's different. And this is a perfect display of somebody who has their, um, uh, found their own unique technique that works really well for themselves. So, Michael, you could definitely afford to go a little bit lighter just so you can get rid of that hitching, um, although I'm not too concerned because I know that this is a, a max attempt, this is part of the programming, you're gonna be pushing those limits every now and then. So keep out this weight, you'll probably fine when you do it again, you'll be stronger already, you can keep going. All right, let's move on to uh, the next video. I actually have two videos here. Um, let's look at, uh, it's, it's a squat, it's a squat technique. So we have a back squat from Kelpaz, and we also have a front squat from Kelsey, Kelsey Paz. So the comments are, I know I have long femurs and I believe I'm hip dominant and have weak quads. Please critique how I can improve. It looks like this regardless of the weight. Thanks, smiley face. All right, let's take a look. So you can see how her body sort of folds and then her, um, her butt shoots up and then her back finishes off the reps. Body's shifting forwards there as well. Butt shoots up and then her back finishes off the reps. One more time, I think. How many have we got here? Oh, we've got probably a few more to go. Yeah, body's folding. And then, okay, yes, we've got a good morning squat. Good morning squat, what are we gonna do about this? I think we get the picture now at this point. Yeah, big good morning squat, okay. Now, interesting to note is Kelsey says that it looks like this regardless of the weight. So I know a lot of people are gonna to think to themselves, oh, she's lifting way too much weight, she's gotta drop the weight back. Um, we don't have a weightless example here. Um, do we? I'm pretty sure the other video I have was just, uh, just her front squat. Yeah, just her front squat. So we'll bring that up later in, uh, to look at it as well. Actually, let's, let's look at it now, let's look at it now. Um, go through it a little bit quicker. Here we go. Front squat. So she's more upright, less of that forward fold, okay. Um, what a, quote, a front squat's very different to a back squat, so we expect to see something like this. How would I fix this forward lean? The butt shooting up early. Let's have a look at that again, over here. How do we go about fixing that good morning squat? Butt shoots up, then back finishes off the reps. Um, as she's correctly noted here, she has long femurs. Hip dominance, I don't really know what that really means. People like to throw those kinds of terms around saying, oh, you're hip dominant, you're quad dominant. 
um, and you have weak quads, that doesn't really mean a lot. I mean, weak quads does probably indicate something, um, but these are just buzz terms that get thrown around a lot. She definitely does have long femurs, so that's the upper thigh bone there, and that is probably why she's elevating her heels as well to try to accommodate for that. But what's happening here is she's still folding forwards considerably. Now, the issue here is her body's trying to negotiate keeping that barbell traveling in as straight a line as possible. So it's having her body fold around to make sure that bar can keep moving. You can see here, as she comes down into the squat, the knees bend and the hips break at the same time. But at this point here, the knees pretty much stop traveling forwards. They come forward a little bit more, and then they kind of get, they get, oh, they do come forward more than that one. Yeah. The knees kind of get stuck at this point as she drops down a little bit further. And it's not until she gets past this point here. Let's go through that frame by frame. Yeah, knees, knees, knees are staying static. And then at this point here, she starts to drift her body weight forwards. So what's happening is she's not thinking enough or not cueing enough of her knees traveling forwards earlier. I would suspect that if she was trying to push her knees forwards a little bit more as she squats, she'd be able to stay a little bit more upright. The first, let's go through that again from the top. This first portion, it's quite even, but then the knees stop moving, and it's all from here, hips going back, hips going back, hips going back. And then at this point, around here maybe, when she's hit parallel, the knees start traveling forwards. So there's a bit of a mistiming happening there. What we should see is both the knees and hips folding at the same time, so the bar travels straight up and down. So a bit of it can be cueing. A bit of it might be mobility through the ankle. It might be the way that she's pressuring through her feet as well, uh, which we can't really see here. Um, and it could also be to do with the fact that she's using a high bar placement for a long femur individual, and it could also be relative to the, to the heel elevation. So we have a few things to work with here. What I would recommend you do, Kelsey, is increase the heel elevation slightly. This would help to push you forwards more onto the ball of your foot and help you drive your knees forwards more. I'd also be cueing things like trying to think about pushing your knees forwards more as you drop down to the squat. That'll help you stay a little bit more upright and keep that bar path a little bit more vertical. Overall though, like doing those, addressing that, will start to fix up a lot of what's going on here. It'll help you get more into your quads when you squat, help you strengthen those quads if they are a weak link there, and help you stay more upright and get more out of your lower, get less out of your lower back when you squat. Because this definitely can be made more efficient. Accessory-wise, you might want to be adding in some front foot elevated split squats to help to get, get those, those knees traveling forwards. But I think putting in a bit more of a heel elevation will be really, really useful. Um, the thing that's hard to see, again, is, just how, is how you are displacing weight through your feet. Do you have a very stable stance? Are you kind of flopping around in your shoes there? It's hard to tell how to see, just, but just make sure you do have a firm tripod stance between your big toe or the ball of your foot, the pinky ball of the foot and the heel, and you keep um, that firm pressure all the way through the entire lift. Um, but I think this is a simple case of address that heel elevation, Think about pushing your knees forwards more. Maybe work on ankle mobility, but honestly, your ankles look plenty mobile. You're getting plenty of knee deviation over the toes there. It's more about cueing it and getting your body used to it, and the heel lift can help with that. And, and it's kind of, um, it's why you can see here, front squat, yeah, there's less weight involved on the bar, but the body's much more upright. And that's because the bar's no longer placed here on the back, it's here in front of your body. So, Having your body, having the bar behind you, it forces you to have to counterbalance by leaning forwards more to keep that bar weight over your midfoot. When the bar, when the weight is in front of your body, you don't have to counterbalance forwards as much because that will then push the barbell again in front of your midfoot. Just like deadlifting, what you want to see here is the barbell traveling above the midfoot in a vertical line or as close to the vertical as possible the entire time. So that's why it's always easier to stay more upright in a goblet squat or a front squat because it's putting the weight in a, with your upright torso more over your midfoot. If the weight started to deviate forwards too much, 
um, you'll lose that midfoot position and you'll topple forwards. So you, you instinct, instinctively have to stay more upright and lean back slightly to counterbalance that weight pulling you forwards. Barbell back squat is the complete opposite. The weight um, pulling you backwards, so to stop you from toppling over backwards, you have to lean forwards more. And that's where heel elevation can help, um, and that's where just doing a front squat can help as well. Um, if you want to learn a bit more about that and you haven't checked it out already, I do have a, a little workshop video up here I'll put in the corner that breaks down this little, in a little bit more detail for you. So go check that out if you want. All right, uh, let's go through one more video. We have this one from Na Naomi. Nay, nay, Naomi. Um, all right, let's take a look. She is saying, I was wondering what your opinion is on how little I am controlling the negative in the lift. All right, so I can already tell just by looking at what's going on here with the outfit. Knee sleeves, thick powerlifting belt, wrist wraps. We have a powerlifter here. So this should be pretty cool. Thick legs. How much weight is on that? Okay, this is a really, really good squat. What do we have here? Uh, we've got like 120, 130, 135. We have close to like 137 to 140 there. That's nearly three plates or 315 for the Americans on the bar there. And she's a, 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 little, a little person. Like she's not humongous or anything like I don't know what she'd weigh, she probably weighs like, I don't know, 65 kilos maybe, at most. Crazy, that's a lot of strength. Um, look, I'm not sure if you were posting this for a form critique or if you just wanted to flex on all of us, um, but this is fantastic. I'm not concerned at all about the um, lack of control on that negative. I think it's a great amount of control on the negative. Good stability, good breath, good brace really stable squat. You were built. You were built to squat. Yeah, um, I don't have much to say about this. This just looks really good. I was going to keep replaying it. Pow! Good power. Big breath. Everything's set. Nice. Oof, good. Look how consistent that is. Rep to rep, rep to rep. Just consistent. Amazing. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I, I don't have much to say. I feel kind of empty. Great lift. Great lift. That's about it. I think I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, well done to you, Naomi, for having a fantastically strong squat. For how many was that? That was like three, four? Let's count that again. Just one more time, guys. One more time. One. Oh, so strong. Two. Love it. Three. Is that it? One more. That is crazy. That is so good. That is so, so, so good. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, keep doing what you're doing. You really don't need my advice. I think the amount of control you have there is fine. Um, it's not alarming me whatsoever. Keep going. Keep going. <sighs> All right. That's it for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this critique video and that you got a lot out of it. If you want to submit your own videos, as I said, there's a link in the description box below. And that's about it. Have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.